Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I thought it'd be fun to piece together this super colorful cookie party puzzle from the brand Eurographics. And this video is actually requested by a viewer. And although I've got quite a few of their puzzles in my collection already, and I've done quite a few in the past, I haven't actually made a video on it. So I thought this would be a good chance to do that. Um, and I think it'd also be a really good opportunity since I haven't done one for quite some time to re-familiarize myself with the brand, um, but also to let you know what the brand's like, especially if you haven't heard of them before or you haven't had a chance to do one yet. Um, so when it came to choosing which one, I have actually been quite intrigued by these ones in tin. So normally a lot of your graphics come in like your regular sort of cardboard puzzle box. Um, that's the case with all the ones in my collection apart from this. But yeah, I thought this was a bit of a different look for them. So I thought, why not grab one of these? And that way we can also, apart from the packaging, see if there's anything else different between this style of Eurographics compared to some of the ones in my collection. Um, so like I said, this one's called Cookie Party. And the reason why I chose this one is probably pretty obvious. It's very bright and very pretty and colorful and has lots of very cute images. So basically it features like this sort of scene of all these like different iced cookies. Um, and also like, I guess a kind of hot chocolate or a coffee there in the corner. So yeah, there's all sorts of cute little uh, different designs like a unicorn, love hearts, flowers, this kooky looking caterpillar. Um, yeah, all sorts of like really cute and very fun looking cookies. So yeah, I think this will be a really fun one to put together. Um, so in a sec, we are gonna have a close look at the packaging and unbox it. Then of course, look at the pieces and also compare the pieces with that of maybe one or two Eurographics in my collection already. And of course, get into some puzzling. So let's take a closer look at the packaging on the outside first. Um, so yeah, it comes in this, I guess, fairly square or square with rounded edges tin. Um, so yeah, just a like, kind of like a classic, almost cookie tin, funnily enough. Um, and yeah, it's fairly small, fairly heavy. Um, I guess about as sturdy as any kind of cookie tin or something like that. Um, and actually when I ordered this, I didn't realize, but the image on the front's actually embossed, but I couldn't tell that on the website I ordered it from. So that was kind of a nice surprise. Um, yeah, so on the front, we've got uh, the name of the puzzle, Cookie Party, and then Eurographics Puzzles here. And then it's actually got the name of the puzzle in different languages as well. Then we've got here, I guess the whole image. It has a border around it. I'm not sure if that is part of the puzzle or not. I guess we will find out. But yeah, the images, yeah, got all this embossing. Actually, the low, the little name and logo up here does too. So a bit of AS, ASMR going on here. But yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. I think it's kind of cute. It makes it look more fun. Um, and actually the text down here is sort of embossed as well. So it says 1000, it's got a little puzzle piece, it says jigsaw puzzle, again, in different languages. And it says poster included, and that's also repeated in different languages. So there we go, we get a poster. And then around the edges, there's no text, but it's basically got, I guess, sections of the image kind of repeated. And for this particular image, I think it just looks really cool. Like it's really eye catching and really pretty. This is the sort of tin where I think I would definitely keep it. It looks, I mean, well, I need something to store the pieces in anyway, I guess. But like, if it was a choice, like I would keep it because it just looks really visually fun and really pretty. And then when we move to the back, we've got more information. So again, some of the same stuff repeated. 1000 jigsaw puzzles, different languages, cookie party, Eurographics puzzles, some other languages. Again, we've got the entire image with also a border, but a different colored border than the front. So yeah, don't know if it comes with the border on it or not. And then it has a little circle here that says poster included. And then it's sort of got all this, you know, information like Eurographics, it's got their website says there, uh, you know, Montreal, Canada, designing Canada, uh, made in China. And then it's got the puzzle size, both in inches and centimeters. So I'm just gonna read out the centimeters cause I don't know how to read out the inches here, <laughs> but I'll put it all on the screen. Um, so it's 48.89 centimeters, really oddly specific by 67.63 centimeters. The uh, inches is really oddly specific too. So, 
but I will put it on the screen. And yeah, 1000 pieces and it has like the barcode and all the sort of recycling, choking hazard, that sort of information there. Um, so this didn't come shrink wrapped, but from the looks of it, it does have a couple of these like clear little stickers. So I think that's the only thing holding the sort of like sealing the lid. So let's see if we can pull these off. Yeah, that one seems to come off pretty easily. And let's see if we can get this one off too. Yep, cool. They come off pretty easily without leaving any sticky behind. And yeah, the lid just comes off. Just silver on the inside. And then, oh, okay, this is cool. We have what looks like a resealable Ziploc bag. Hooray! That makes me happy. And it looks like I don't have to cut it either, so even better. And then inside we have a poster. Um, oh, okay. So it's it's not that big. It's like, I guess about A4, but it's, and it looks like it doesn't have the border included in the image. So that's kind of nice. Uh, that should make the puzzle a little bit easier to do actually. So it's got the poster on one side and then has a bit of a, I guess, advertisement on the back. So it's sort of just advertising their website, saying more than 750 uh, puzzles available. Uh, yeah, visit the website for the complete collection. Yeah, and just the same in different languages. So just promoting their pu other puzzles and website, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, the tin is just blank. Like, that's it. So pretty simple, but kind of nice that you get this cute tin and also a resealable bag and a little poster as well. Um, I guess just thinking ahead, um, when I go to puzzle, I probably won't actually use the tin. I might, I think I'll initially put the pieces in there in a minute, but I'll probably use some sorting trays because I feel like with this tin, you, it's quite, it's kind of deep and kind of small. So you don't like have a lot of room, especially for 1000 pieces to kind of like rummage around in. So I think, yeah, that's probably the downside with this size tin. So I guess let's open up these puzzle pieces in a sec and take a look at them and we'll also compare them to a couple of my other Eurographics puzzles. So I've emptied out the pieces from the bag and before I forget, um, the bag actually does have some puzzle dust in it. So I don't know if there's going to be a lot in amongst the pieces. I guess we'll sort of find out as we go on, uh, but just thought I would let you know. Um, so the first thing I noticed about the pieces is that they're all irregular shaped. So yeah, there's some really like fun and quirky shapes here. Um, I don't know how hard it's going to make the puzzle. I, personally, I do usually find uh, irregular piece shapes a little bit more tricky just because I'm not used to them. I don't do them that often. Um, but yeah, there's like all sorts of really fun shapes. Um, and the tabs on them are quite like prominent and very round. So yeah. Um, so looking at an individual piece, I guess let's grab this one. Um, the back is just a really nice, simple, I guess, kind of blue board, like fairly smooth. So that's nice. And then the thickness is kind of just a medium thickness. Um, it's definitely not chunky, just a pretty straightforward medium thickness. Um, I think I kind of feel like, yeah, I can feel it bend a little bit. So I don't think it's going to be, it's quite as sturdy as some puzzle pieces, but it still seems like strong, but I would say like if there's any pieces that are like thin, like maybe this one, it might be more prone to getting bent than some of the others. So I guess it's just something to keep an eye on and I have, I'll have to see if there's any damaged pieces, but so far so good. Um, but yeah, so that's just something to yeah note, I guess. And then the top is a nice smooth paper. Um, it is kind of, does. it's not exactly glossy, but because it's so smooth, it does sort of pick up a bit of sheen and glare from like my ring light. So I guess it, like the dust, we'll sort of have to see how much of a problem this is gonna be when I'm putting the puzzle together, whether it's gonna like be a pain or not. Um, but yeah, so again, just something to be aware of. Um, and from what I can tell the colors and the image looked very crisp and bright and colorful and seemed to match the poster pretty nicely. So yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. So definitely happy with that. So as you've probably already noticed, I've got a couple of other Eurographics puzzles here that I've pulled out of my collection. So the first thing before looking at pieces that is different is uh, these two don't actually come with a poster, whereas this one does. And this one comes with a Ziploc bag, whereas 
I believe these ones just came with like a plastic bag that you had to sort of cut open. I've since put it in my, the pieces in my own Ziploc bags, but yeah, it doesn't come with like a resealable bag. So um, I guess slightly less fancy. Um, yeah, so let's have a quick look at the pieces of these two. So this one here is, I think it's at least a couple years old. I don't know how like long ago Eurographics put out these sort of, this Japanese sort of series. Um, unfortunately, I can't find like dates on these. Like I found a copyright date on this, but that's more to do with the artwork, but I couldn't actually find uh, a date of like when each of these puzzles was sort of manufactured. Um, but from what I understand, from what I can sort of remember, I mean, like this one's fairly new. This one's maybe at least a couple years old, maybe older. And then another one I have here is kind of recent, maybe one or two years old. Um, anyway, so these are all 1000 pieces. And so interestingly, the pieces in uh, this one are also irregular. Um, so they, yeah, they're all kind of quirky fun shapes as well but they are still a bit different like the tabs on these um, they're not as like round and prominent as these ones although the surface is very similar this might be a little bit more glossy uh, yeah maybe they're both that sort of like kind of shiny paper I guess or a very smooth paper I think the cookie party ones are a little less glossy um, but they're, they're similar and then interestingly the backs um, these are a gray board, whereas I think it's very subtle, but this is slightly more, I guess, of a, a blue board, like the color is a little bit more blue. But what the bigger difference is here is that um, this has been, these cookie party ones have been cut very crisply and have a very straight, clean edge. Whereas these have a very kind of like almost frayed or like tatty kind of like cardboard edge. They're a bit rough. They kind of remind me of Springbok, how Springbok are very cardboardy and have that sort of almost frayed edge about them. So yeah, similar to that. So kind of interesting. And then as for thickness, um, these ones definitely seem a little bit thicker, but not by much, just a fraction really. And if I, yeah, and these don't seem to be any more sturdy than those. These seem to bend pretty, like feel a bit more soft and bend pretty easily too. So. Yeah, but um, some similarities and a few differences. So they definitely seem like they could be made by different manufacturers. I'm not too sure, but yeah, interesting. And then we've got here another puzzle from my collection. Um, so yeah, like I said, this one's a little bit more recent than the Japanese one, but obviously still older than this. And this is from their Colors of the World series. Um, they have like a few different series, like they have an artist series and some other things too. Um, and then this one, interestingly enough, the pieces are different again. So this one, the pieces are actually all just two tab pieces. So they're not irregular. They're like the sort of standard cut, but there was only, there's no variation in pieces. They're all just two tabs. Um, so I guess they have subtle differences, but I can't remember, like I did that one quite a while ago, so I can't remember my experience doing it, but I wouldn't have been surprised if there were some false fits since there's not much piece shape variation. So yeah, that's interesting. Again, the tops are sort of that same kind of similar to the other two that smooth, maybe a little bit glossy or sheen kind of paper finish. Um, the backs are probably a bit more, a little more of a gray board. And um, unlike the Japanese one, these, this one here is a bit more of a cleaner cut like the cookie party. So yeah, kind of, um, yeah, interesting. Oh, sorry, thickness, um, very similar again. So yeah, I guess these ones are a bit more alike with the cookie party ones, like the ones in the tin than the Japanese ones. Um, they all have some similarities like the, yeah, even though there's differences, there's quite a lot of similarities too. Like they all feel kind of similar-ish. They feel about the same kind of quality as each other. Maybe the ones in the Japanese puzzle are a bit, feel a bit lower in quality just because of the sort of tatty frayed edges, I think that kind of maybe makes the quality feel a bit not as nice, um, but yeah, kind of interesting. And something else that I noticed is I actually pulled out another one of my puzzles, which I decided I was getting too many here, but we'll just talk about the other one. Um, it is sort of a, probably about as recent as this one. and it had more of a traditional cut. So 
your sort of standard cup, but it included three tabs and four tabs, so kind of more uh, of what we've seen in a lot of puzzles lately where, yeah, it's got all the, you know, the inverted one and the one with one tab, two tabs. Yeah, like kind of what you normally would expect. So yeah, interesting that all the pieces have similarities, but there seems to be no real consistency in like the style, style of the piece. Um, and I also can't seem to figure out a way how to tell like if your puzzle, what kind of pieces your puzzle is going to have. I thought that maybe like the little symbol here might have given a clue, but it seems to be the same symbol on all of them, which is like a standard puzzle piece when obviously we have puzzles here that don't have standard pieces. So yeah, and it doesn't seem to be any written indication of whether it's irregular piece shapes or standard or traditional cut or what. So I guess it's a inconsistent surprise as to what you're going to get. So I guess all the ones in the tins are irregular piece shaped. Um, yeah, so I just thought that's really interesting. Um, it's a bit weird. I don't know how they've decided which puzzles are going to have what pieces. Um, yeah, I guess if you've done any Eurographics puzzles, let me know in the comments below what the pieces were like. Which, which variety did you get? Um, yeah. So uh, in a sec, we're actually going to get finally get into puzzling. And I guess let's move these out of the way. Um, I guess when it comes to my approach, I think because there's lots of like colors and like variation going on in this image, we can probably do the edge pieces first. So I think that will be pretty straightforward. And then I think there is a lot going on here. So I'm, it may be one of these puzzles where I have to refer to the poster a fair bit, um, but I'll probably just try and pull out like identify sections like this green caterpillar stands out to me so I'll probably pull out any bright greens because there's not too many as a bit maybe this sort of like coffee or hot chocolate here that's pretty distinct um, you know like certain blues or reds or yeah I guess I'll just you know see which colors kind of stand out to me and I'll I guess pull those out and try and put those together but yeah I think it's going to be one of these sort of uh, bits all over the place type puzzle. So I think there's going to be lots of little sections everywhere for a quite a while while puzzling until things slowly come together. Um, but that's just the nature of, I guess, puzzle designs like this. So uh, enough chatting, I guess. Let's get into some puzzling.
So I'm really loving how this puzzle is starting to look. It's very cute and colorful and the image is really kind of coming together and taking shape. Um, I feel like I haven't done that much of it though. I think just because it, it is like made up of little bits instead of like seeing a whole image come together. So it doesn't feel quite as satisfying as doing kind of like your regular, like one image instead of all these little kind of collagey bits. But I guess when I look at it, it is sort of roughly halfway done. Um, and to get to this point so far, it's taken about three hours and 15 minutes, including sorting time. Um, so yeah, I guess that's not too bad. Um, I'm not sure how long the rest of it's going to take. We do have like three trays here full of lots of pinks and other colored pieces that need placing. Um, but I'm, my guess is, is probably an, at least another couple of hours or so. Uh, maybe another three hours. I don't know. Hopefully not too long. Um, and you may notice I'm sort of missing an edge piece up here. I'm guessing it's somewhere in there. I mean, to be honest, I haven't looked that hard for it. I sort of figured I'll stumble across it at some point when I get to that section. Um, so I'm not too worried about that for now. So I'm assuming it will turn up. Um, so I guess let's talk quality. Um, so I have some mixed feelings. So, I mean, I like how crisp and colorful and clear the image on the pieces are. And actually the surface, even though it's very smooth, it's shiny now because of the extra light I have for filming, but actually while puzzling, it wasn't a problem at all. So quite pleased with that. And also the dust, that I mentioned before, that hasn't been too bad. I can see a little bit, but I actually kind of just forgot about it. So I guess it didn't bother me too much. Um, but when it comes to piece fit, uh, well, the pieces, I guess it visually, they fit quite well together. And I guess even connecting them, they seem to like fit in place well, and I haven't had any false fits. I mean, I didn't expect to really have any since it's an irregular piece shape. But uh, when it comes to the like tightness, of the pieces it's very loose so I guess yeah like you just can't easily pick up sections they kind of just fall apart like that um, and the other thing is this is this one's on me I have like fake or gel nails um, and that makes picking up these pieces really like I kind of have to like it can be a bit tough trying to pick them up um, I think just because they're like quite smooth and they're a bit thinner than some pieces so it's like yeah so if you have uh, nails it might be a bit of a like issue trying to pick them up but that's just a personal thing which I thought was both amusing and frustrating um, but yeah so it's a bit disappointing about the loose piece fit so we're not doing a puzzle pickup today that's for sure um, yeah and that's been a bit of a pain especially with this puzzle where I'm working on little colorful sections and ideally I would like to sort of pick them up and be able to move them from in front of me to somewhere else. But I've had to be really mindful about where I piece things together so I can slide them into place or actually like piece them together in the spot that they're going to go just because they won't stay together if I try to pick them up. So yeah, bit of a pain. Um, yeah, but apart from that, everything else about the quality has been fine. I haven't found any damaged pieces. Um, it's actually been in like all the pieces are in very nice condition. And uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, so far, I guess, in terms of piecing the puzzle together, my strategy of doing the border first, and then sort of picking out like different colored sections or pattern sections seems to be working pretty well so far. Some things that I thought would be easy, like this sort of coffee here, have actually I still haven't finished it so it's a bit like has been taking a bit longer than I thought so some areas are more tricky than others but it's still definitely getting there so yeah and looking forward to sort of seeing the rest of it sort of come together so I think that's pretty much everything I need to say about this for now um, so I think we might as well get back into some puzzling
I finished the puzzle and I think it's just looking really fun and colorful and I really love the cookies. I think they just look really cute, especially the shapes and the designs. And just, yeah, it's just a really fun, cheerful looking puzzle. Um, and so this second session of puzzling took about two hours and 45 minutes. So I guess all up that means, uh, including sorting to endpoint, it took pretty much six hours to do. So I think that's not bad for a 1000 piece puzzle, especially with like a lot of detail and things going on. I think that, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so let's talk about the quality. Um, I agree with a lot of what I said before, but I've also got a couple things to add. Um, so yeah, I think the image on the pieces is very bright and vivid and crisp and colorful. So very happy with that. Um, the sheen and glare wasn't, uh, even though at the moment with my extra lighting, it's a, you know, a bit shiny looking. Um, it actually wasn't really a problem when puzzling at all. So that's great. And as for puzzle dust, um, there's like little, a little bit, but it was pretty minor and I, most of the time I just forgot about it. So yeah, pretty pleased with that. Um, but when it comes to the piece fit, it is very loose. So you pretty much, yeah, that's about as, yeah, there we go. It, you just can't pick up uh, large sections or any sections really. Um, so you definitely can't do a puzzle pickup. Um, and that was a bit of a, you know, a bit frustrating with especially a puzzle like this where you want to work on little bits in front of you and then move them somewhere else. So I had to be very strategic about how and what I worked on to make sure I could still get it to its spot without having to kind of redo it. Um, and then the other things I've now noticed, like, well, while puzzling, I noticed that if I lent on the puzzle with my hand or arm, sometimes the pieces would actually end up sticking to you and you'd be pulling them out of their spot. So just something to be aware of. Uh, so that's how loose the fit is that like, it, you know, you can accidentally lift them up, just having them stick to you. So that's a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, now that it's finished, I've noticed that it's really difficult trying to get it to all lay flat. Like if you push down one area, cause it sort of sticks up a bit, another area sort of tends to pop up. Like I feel like I'm constantly trying to flatten bits down. Like it's, it's kind of like playing whack-a-mole to be honest. So yeah, it's a bit frustrating. Um, yeah, just, I guess something else to let you, you know, to let you be aware of. Um, so yeah, definitely found the piece fit very frustrating and that kind of made the whole puzzling experience a bit annoying to be honest. Um, yeah, so it's a bit, yeah, a bit disappointing because I really liked the image and, you know, thought the tin and everything was really nice. But yeah, I think that was a bit of a letdown with the piece fit for sure. So let's talk price. Um, so I got this off an Australian puzzle website for $31.90 Australian. It was actually on sale. A lot of places have been trying to sell these tinned puzzles for like $40 even, or, you know, between 30 and $40. Um, but thankfully I, yeah, grabbed it for sort of like just under $32. Um, I did look this up in the U S and it seems to go for about 18 U S dollars. Um, so the 3190 Australian dollars, um, is a fairly kind of, I guess, affordable to mid range price here in Australia for puzzles. I would say, um, you can definitely get quite a lot of brands for that sort of $30 mark. Um, like Ravensburger, um, what else can we get? Uh, oh, it's so hard to think off the top of my head. Um, I guess even like Genuine Fred, um, what else? I don't know. I can't think, I can't think off the top of my head, but the point is, is you can get, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of puzzle brands out there that are around that price or a little bit higher, a little bit lower, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty affordable price, I guess. Um, so I guess the question is, would I recommend this particular puzzle for that price? And I think I'd have to say no, uh, for me personally, I just found the piece fit a real deal breaker and just too frustrating. So even though I really like the sort of tin and everything and you know, it, it looks cute and I love the image. It's just, yeah, just too much of a pain really. So I think if I saw another one in the tins, I would just have to say no to it. But that being said, I still recommend the Eurographics brand as a whole for that price. I think it's a fairly like accessible, affordable price. Um, the brand itself has a lot of like variation in puzzle designs out there. It's really sort of something for everyone. Um, they, I mean, even though they're, I guess, piece 
fit and style is very inconsistent. I've definitely done puzzles of theirs before like that I have in my collection that I've really enjoyed and I believe have stayed together a lot better than these pieces. So I sort of feel like, yeah, overall it's still a pretty reasonable brand and it's still a fairly good quality brand, I think for that price point. Um, and something else to mention is that brand, I find Eurographics is like quite accessible and easy to get. So it seems to be available on lots of different websites in lots of different sort of hobby shops. So yeah, I think for those reasons, I would still recommend the brand. So in the comments below, let me know what you thought of this particular puzzle. Did you like the design? And you know, what did you think of the piece fit? Is having such a loose fit a deal breaker for you when puzzling or does it not bother you at all? You know, and what did you, what do you think of the Eurographics brand? Have you tried their puzzles before? Um, or, you know, or is it a brand that you're interested in and you'd like to try some of their puzzles? And I guess if you have done their puzzles before, let us know your experience of like, how the pieces fit together or you know did you enjoy the experience or you didn't and why in the comments below if you enjoyed this video then make sure you show that like button some love and for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by subscribing not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released but you're also helping this channel grow you can also find me over on instagram at jigsaw underscore juby where you'll find even more puzzle content thanks so much and see you next time bye